Shalom, shalom, shalom. Brother Randy here. Uh, I had a uh, couple of questions posed to me online, and I was speaking to a brother in the faith uh, about solar. And, uh, some questions were posed in reference to how we're going to how we're going about use solar, and uh, how it, how is it uh, how we're using it in the uh, in the cost benefit analysis uh, in terms of uh, what's the best way to go about doing it. And I'll uh, share with you some of the experiences that I've had in. And as well as some of the mistakes that I've made in terms of uh, solar. Uh, so let's start off with this. Uh, this is a uh, Solutions from Science uh, 250 watt solar panels. Now, uh, it comes with a complete solar generator from Solutions from Science. And uh, this unit costs about $5,000. And I purchased this unit about, uh, I would say, two years ago uh, as well. And uh, I don't think long term, uh, in terms of the timing in which I purchased, it was not a good purchase. And the simple reason why I say that is because of the battery. Now, uh, batteries last about three, four years. Um, and uh, unfortunately, these batteries on this unit uh, will have to be replaced. Uh, and when you look at uh, a solar project uh, and you're talking about what you're going to be running off solar, uh, the whole idea is to look at the cost benefit. What is it going to cost you to sell it, to set up a solar system? And uh, what is the benefits that you're going to get out of it in terms of uh, whether you're going to go off grid or you're going to uh, plug into the grid to get your power. And it's been my experience that it is cheaper uh, to get power from the utility company than it is to purchase solar. And I'll give you specifics as to why. Uh, I think that is the case. Uh, here at the Covenant, our electric bill is uh, $50 a month. Out of that $50 a month, uh, $7 is, is, is used to run a night light. Uh, and that night light is up there that comes on every night. And that is $7 to run that light uh, every night. Uh, the cost to pipe the electricity in here is about $23, okay? So, in the actual energy that we're using, if you take out the the, the light as well as uh, the just basic electric cost, which is 20, about $23, $24, we're spending about $18 to $20 in actual electricity, uh, actual wattage that we're using. What are we running off of that and how we run it? Uh, we run uh, uh, the uh, two deep freezers, uh, a large refrigerator, and a smaller refrigerator. And uh, the two deep freezers, we put on an eight-hour or six-hour cycle, meaning that they're on eight hours and they're off eight hours. Uh, the reason why we do that is because um, you don't need deep freezers on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In addition to that, uh, we are going off-grid when it comes to our hot water, so we're not using 2020 salt for hot water, as well as cooking. We're not using the range for cooking. Uh, so that saves an extraordinary amount of money there because the fuel for that is, of course, unlimited. And if you want uh, to know about uh, how I process wood, I did a video earlier where you can look at uh, how I process wood from start to finish and where we get to wood. Uh, but the uh, chief uh, expense associated with solar is, of course, the batteries. You can purchase solar panels relatively cheaply on eBay uh, uh, and the kilowatt per hour uh, per panel is, is, is very cheap. However, when you look at the how you store uh, your power, that's where the big money comes in. If you're electric bill is let's say five hundred or a thousand dollars a month uh you can get the solar panels yeah uh relatively speaking the solar panels could be um uh relatively cheap uh and that is running in the tens of thousands of dollars but how are you going to store that power how are you going to store that power uh, uh long term and that's where the big money is coming in you're talking about a hundred amp hour uh, uh, uh top of the line agm battery it's going to cost you $250 to $300. Now, if you're going to need a battery bank, we're talking serious battery bank to run a uh, community off of solar, 
and off of the grid. So it's been my experience that you're going to want to, the, the, the way to deal with this, and it's interesting how they have it set up where the solar panels are relatively cheap, but the, uh, uh, the battery bank to store the power, uh, there seems to be no new technology uh, associated with these systems in order to get rid of or eliminate the need uh, for the electric grid. This is how they get you. Uh, they get you cheap on the solar panels with the battery bank, you got to keep charged, you got to keep up and running, and the batteries will have to eventually be replaced in three to five years. So you're going to have to go out and get new batteries. So uh, the only thing that I would suggest um, uh, that you do is being able to, in an off-grid situation, to be able to use your solar panels to just run a freezer and everything else can be off-grid. Uh, another uh, important feature, which I think solar panels are good for, and which we're going to be uh, uh, installing here at the Covenant this year, will be um, a direct current solar power system. So you can get a submersible pump, and you can uh, tie that directly into your your solar your solar panels, so where that when the, the the sun hits it. It's going directly into the, the pump used to get your water out of the system. And you can buy a 1,000-gallon water tank for uh, probably like six, six, $650, and you can get a couple of those, and you can store that water above ground. And then uh, with your rainwater catchment system, uh, you can use the majority of the rainwater to do your showering uh, and boil that water with the wood. And you can as well uh, use that for uh, your um, uh, what is it, showering, uh, washing dishes, things of that nature, uh, washing down the car or whatever that you, that you may have, as well as um, washing clothes. But it's, it's probably even more healthy and it's good to uh, wash your clothes with rainwater, which we do here uh, at the Covenant. So uh, that is my overall take on solar how you should use it, and of the benefits of using it in various systems. So the idea is to employ all types of methods uh, in terms of reducing your electric bill uh, by getting high energy uh, 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 light bulbs, making sure that there's no more than two lights on in the house at any uh, given time, uh, uh, conserving as much energy as possible, and, uh, and you'll be surprised how much or how little you're going to need uh, to... Um, live in uh, and run a home uh, off of uh, minimal amounts of electricity uh, uh, and it's healthier too it's definitely healthier and it's and it's and it's a different way of life uh, the best way to beat the electric system uh, an electric company is to, is to reduce the uh, the amount uh, that you need to um, uh, rely on them for their electricity and saving a whole lot of money so hopefully uh, this video has been able to uh, educate you uh, on the experience of uh, using solar off-grid, the applications in which you can use it, uh, as well as the cost effectiveness of using it um, uh, when you move. Now always consider, again, how much are you going to pay um, per month for your electric bill? How can you reduce that uh, electric bill through uh, different systems? Uh, but in terms of solar, going completely solar, um, it's, it's not a good idea. It's just, just not cost effective so due to the simple fact, again, that the electric company can produce uh, and deliver you uh, more uh, in, uh, uh, electricity cheaper uh, than you may uh, do in terms of, uh, you know, setting up a, a total system uh, for yourself. Um, so, uh, again... Hopefully this has been able to educate you out there, and if you have any questions, please like, subscribe, uh, comment, and, uh, and uh, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Shalom.